Fundsmith Equity is a popular UK active fund which has the rare accolade of successfully beating the market over the long term. So in this video we look at the drivers behind fund return to see if we can capture some of the outperformance of Fundsmith and other active funds without paying high fees. Remember if you do enjoy our videos please do subscribe to our channel and like this video. So let's look at whether we can copy the returns of Fundsmith with lower fees in a bit more detail. So what is it that drives the returns of a fund? Well the thing that you're paying a lot for in the case of an active fund is the stock picking ability of the fund manager. So in the case of Terry Smith who manages Fundsmith you're paying him to find stocks which beat the global market and that's something he's been very successful at in the past. And that's unusual for global funds for UK fund managers where only 1 in 20 of the fund managers have beaten their index over the last 10 years. Now a lot of the heavy lifting for many funds including Fundsmith comes from the upward drift of stocks globally over time and that's called beta and it's simply tracking markets upwards which you can do very cheaply with a passive fund. And this is what many investors choose to do, partly because of the very poor performance statistics for active fund managers. And Fundsmith is here the exception where we're still seeing big inflows into the fund and it remains very popular. Another source of outperformance for UK fund managers has been the steady decline of sterling in terms of its strength relative to other currencies such as the dollar because when sterling weakens when we convert those foreign investments back into sterling it effectively increases the return of the fund. And Fundsmith along with other funds which have invested in dollar denominated assets have benefited from that sterling weakening. Another source of outperformance for a fund would be its factor tilt. So for example does the fund tend to buy stocks which are cheap? That would be a value tilt. Or does it buy stocks which tend to grow faster because they're growing their earnings very aggressively. For example US tech stocks would fall into that category, companies like Apple, companies like Nvidia. But there are many of these factors which have been documented to beat the market long term and you can buy them fairly cheaply with passive funds now. So perhaps if you can find the factor tilt of a fund you could reproduce it by choosing factor funds which have the same tilt. And furthermore you could do that more cheaply than buying the fund itself. Then finally one of the other choices of the fund manager is to tilt towards a particular region. So for example developed markets versus emerging markets or Asia versus Europe. Or they could choose a particular country so they might tilt towards the United States or Japan or they could choose a particular sector like the tech sector. So by looking at the tilts of an active fund you can start to think about reproducing its returns by producing a portfolio with similar tilts. But the key point is that of all of these different drivers of fund return there's one which is most expensive and that's the stock picking ability. We're willing to pay active managers very high fees in order to beat the market and yet many of them fail to do so. So it is refreshing to see a fund like Fundsmith do that on a fairly consistent basis long term. But if we did want to reproduce a portfolio which is Fundsmith like then the good news is that all of those other factors things like beta, the currency effect but also factor tilts and the regional country or sector tilts can all be reproduced very cheaply with passive funds often passive ETFs and that's what we'll be considering in this video. So if you're not familiar with Fundsmith then you can't separate it from the fund manager Terry Smith. He's really interesting to listen to. They have an annual general meeting which is broadcast on YouTube which is always worth listening to. I always watch it and you'll learn a lot about how he goes about stock selection but also his principles of investing. So you'll certainly learn a lot from his principles if you are a single stock investor. Now there are lots of things I like about Fundsmith. It doesn't trade a lot. It has a very concentrated portfolio so they have a lot of conviction in their ideas and also they try not to trade too much. Once they have a stock that they like they stick with it for a long period of time and that reduces their trading fees which in turn presumably could be passed on to you as a saving. However 
The fees for the fund are pretty high at over 1%. The latest fees that I could find for the T class of this global fund were 1.04%, which is very high compared to many passive funds. So you're probably wondering, is it worth it? Well, let's have a look at the returns since 2011, which is when Fundsmith was founded, when the fund was created. And if we look at a comparable benchmark, which is similar to Fundsmith, and in this case, it's a developed market world tracker. So I've used SWDA, the iShares ETF, to compare it with. And this is sterling denominated, so the currency effect will be the same. You can see that Fundsmith has outperformed by a very respectable 4.2% per year on average between 2011 and 2023. And the cumulative effect of that outperformance looks really impressive. We have seen a lag in performance recently. So they had a very bad year in 2020 and they lost a lot of outperformance, about four or five years of outperformance during that sell-off. Now, the story was that it was a defensive portfolio. So even in a down market, it should have outperformed. In practice, that turned out not to be the case. And it still hasn't caught up with global indices, which are cheaper. But certainly over the long term, this is a fund which has outperformed consistently, fairly consistently until recently. If we dig into the fact sheet from Fundsmith, you can get some insight into its geographic split. And you can see that its US allocation is quite considerable. It's 67 percent. Now, that's roughly in line with its benchmark, which would be also around 69 percent currently. So one thing we can do is to look at US indices to see how well the Fundsmith fund has performed relative to, say, the Nasdaq index. And what's pretty remarkable is that the Nasdaq tracker EQQQ, which is sterling denominated, has outperformed Fundsmith very consistently since its inception in 2011. In fact, it's outperformed by about 3.2% per year on average, and the cumulative outperformance is now very considerable. However, the fee for that Nasdaq tracker is only 0.3%. So that's less than a third of the fees that you'd pay for Fundsmith. Now, remember that all of these returns are net of fees. They've already had the fees subtracted from them. To get more insight into how Fundsmith operates, you can look at this bullet point description of their investing principles. They do look for stocks which have got a high return on operating capital employed. They also look for companies which don't have significant leverage. Now, that's easy to quantify. You can easily find companies which satisfy those two criteria because they're numerical. Other criteria are much more subjective and difficult to quantify. So businesses whose advantages are difficult to replicate. This is the idea of a moat, which Benjamin Graham promoted, but which is really difficult to roll into an index which a passive fund can track. Another thing which might be difficult to quantify would be businesses that are resilient to change, particularly technological innovation. That would be very hard to quantify. But certainly some of these factors can be quantified and can be mimicked by some of the indices which are out there, which are then tracked by passive funds, which are very cheap. Now, some of the attributes that we saw there, the criteria which Fundsmith uses to choose its stocks, are captured by a quality factor fund. So this is an index created by MSCI, the index company, and this is tracked by at least one ETF in the UK. And it tries to score companies based on three criteria, one of which is return on equity. So that's how much profit a company generates for every dollar of equity, which is pumped into the company. It also looks at stable year on year earnings growth. So it doesn't want profits which are very volatile, which vary a lot from year to year. It wants them to steadily increase. That's another sign of quality. And then the third criterion is not too much leverage which, remember, is also something that Terry Smith looks for. So this doesn't capture all of the attributes looked for by Fundsmith, but it certainly captures some of them. So let's look at the performance of this index. Now, this is the Invesco IUQF ETF, which tracks that MSCI USA quality index, and it does so in sterling. And what's interesting is that since the inception of the Invesco fund, which was 2016, this isn't such a long period of time as the previous two graphs that we saw, this passive fund has outperformed Fundsmith as well. Not by so much. It's only by 0.5% per year on average. 
But you can see that this factor tilt also outperformed the much more expensive active fund. A lot of that outperformance has come since the crash in 2020. You can see that on the cumulative graph beside me. So we've seen that Fundsmith has outperformed a global developed markets ETF, but underperformed a NASDAQ tracker and a simple quality factor fund, which is also based on US stocks. But the question we'll try and answer now is, can we take multiple cheap funds to try to track Fundsmith as closely as possible? So here we're trying to replicate those returns with as little deviation as possible. So for our Pension Craft members, this is exactly what I tried to do by creating a very simple online tool. Here's that tool in action. And what you can do is type in the Yahoo Finance ticker of a fund. So this is the ticker for Fundsmith Equity, the class T. Then you choose how many funds, how many cheap funds you want to use for the replication. So I can use up to five funds to do the replication. Let's try it for three. And over this period between 2018 and 2023, you can see that this combination of three cheap funds does a fairly good job of mimicking returns for Fundsmith equity. What's in it? Well, it's roughly equal amounts of NASDAQ, that NASDAQ tracker that we saw, EQQQ, but also, somewhat surprisingly, life strategy 20%. This is 80% bonds and 20% stocks and a very low risk portfolio. But then we've also got to add a bit of juice, presumably, some of that IUQF quality factor ETF. So what we've got here is a combination of a pretty boring portfolio with only 20% equity in it, combined with a bit of juice in the form of the MSCI USA Quality Factor Fund, but also a fairly big slug of US tech stocks in the form of the NASDAQ tracker. When we add those together, we come up with a portfolio that mimics Fundsmith surprisingly well. Of course, there are deviations above and below. The replicating portfolio is in red, Fundsmith is in blue. But overall, you can see it does a pretty good job. And at the moment, what's also surprising is that it's actually outperforming Fundsmith. If we reduce it to just two funds, the choices are also quite interesting. Here it's chosen a large cap growth index to track in the US. Now that's going to be dominated by those mega cap tech stocks, remember. And it's also got some life strategy 60. So fairly vanilla and boring 60% stock, 40% bond portfolio combined with a bit of juice in the form of US large cap growth. Now, if you do get our website premium membership, you get access to other goodies. For example, loads of members only videos requested by members themselves, but also a chat application so you can ask a question whenever you want. And of course, access to our trackers, such as that copy fund tool. And you can learn more about our membership by simply going to our website, pensioncraft.com. Well, you might be thinking, well, of course you can track Fundsmith over the period since 2016, because that includes the period of underperformance since 2020. So what I've done here is I've written some bespoke R code, which is very similar to the stuff you can see on our website. But here I've restricted the list of funds to those that go all the way back to 2011. And what's surprising is that with just two funds, you can pretty closely match Fundsmith's returns. The portfolio which does that is two thirds of that EQQQ fund, the NASDAQ tracker in sterling, and one third of a global small cap tracker. What's also interesting is that recently that's significantly outperformed Fundsmith. Now, what I'm not suggesting here by any means is that you can reproduce Terry Smith in some kind of AI dystopian nightmare. Far from it. I love Terry Smith. And I think that the reason why he has inflows into his fund is partly because of his character, partly because of the transparency of his fund, but also because he's a great communicator and a teacher of how to invest, all of which is laudable. But what I would say is that it is worthwhile if you invest in active funds to decompose them into their sources of return. How much is from stock picking, which is what you're paying for, versus how much could be replicated with much cheaper passive funds, either by replicating a regional tilt or a factor tilt or perhaps a country tilt. Because for those things, you're really not getting value for money. You can get those more cheaply elsewhere. So don't forget to get access to our tools and our membership. Just go to our website, pensioncraft.com. And as always, 
Thank you for listening.